This word grain. Put your hand up if you can tell me what a grain. Taiwanese tend to view in, in internationalization as English, right? And so uh, I don't think that's really the problem. Taiwan's English is really good, but the obstacle to internationalization in Taiwan is the attitude of its bureaucracy and the, especially the business culture and the boss culture. That's way more important. I think the, the issue with the problem, the, the issue with that program is that there's no reform of the educational system to support it. And you can see that if Taiwan were really internationalized, people could come from other countries and set up businesses or go to work for Taiwanese bosses. But usually what happens is they do that and they like it for a year and then they leave. It's very difficult to adapt to the work culture here. My name is Michael Turton. I've been living in Taiwan now for 34 years, basically. I first came in 1989. So uh, I, uh, I've been teaching in the universities. I retired out of that system. Now I teach in a high school in Taichung. I write a column for the Taipei Times and I had a very popular and well-known blog, oh, about a decade ago. <laughs> so I've been watching Taiwan grow and change now for a long time and it's really been wonderful to see in many ways. The basic problem I'm seeing, especially at the elementary level, is that there's a lot of foreigners here who could go out to places in Pingdong and Taidong. We want to go there, we love those places, but we can't get work there because the government insists that you have certification in your own country. And what certificate, certified teacher who can make, you know, 80,000 or 100,000 in, say, California, or work in Finland, a, a, a light schedule with, with really great students, is going to come here to teach English to sixth graders for 20,000 US a year? It's not going to happen. So there's a pool of people the government could tap if it wanted, but it uses qualifications to keep them out. And this is actually holding the program back. I know, that's... <laughs> If you wanted to uh, encourage more people to come here, you would have to relax the requirements. And uh, that would be a big help. And raise salaries and, uh, and advertise. I, st I started driving back in, in the South in 1998. And, uh, I had, a, I had accidents, several of them, over the years where a, a, I'm turning left and a vehicle is trying to pass me. That's a really common act. And so that's when I decided, when this car is done, I'm done with cars. And that's what we did. You'd have to leverage the foreign media to write about these things. And why would they write about traffic accident rates? You know, the CNN piece was unusual. I mean, there's a lot. What's happened is because China kicked out all the correspondents, they all moved here. And so they're experiencing Taiwan and they're writing about it and they have to generate stories about it to justify their presence. And so we're finally getting these stories about aspects of Taiwan that needed to be commented on by outsiders. And some cities now in America remove the cars from the city center. And what you, what you have in Taiwan, the problem, the problem is that people are moving out of the cities because it's too expensive, right? So if you took out cars, people would come back in because then they could move about safely. There'd be all kinds of interesting cafes and shops Everywhere that this has happened, local business has gone up, traffic safety has increased, the public attitude towards the city has improved. There's no downside to this except that people have to learn to park outside the city. Just to get married, we had to get, uh, we had to get some paperwork from the Philippines government, that took months to come down. And then um, after we got married to get a visa, that was when things became really serious. The, the, the Philippines government takes months to provide a document that the Taiwan government asks for. That document is a certificate of recognition by the local government. In order for her to get a visa, my government, the US government, and her government have to supply this recognition. It's completely unnecessary. I have a legal marriage certificate from the Household Registration Office in Tanzu. What it means really is that the Ministry of Foreign Affairs here does not recognize marriages between foreigners in Taiwan. The other documents my wife needed uh, to get married, like her police clearance, a couple of days, health check, a week, no problem. The certificate of marriage recognition, 
seven months. And they do that, I can't prove it, but I'm convinced that they do that because they keep migrant workers in their jobs that way. Because what happens is when you get married, you can't work. You can't work for five years, so I married my wife, and now, even though her old job would take her back in a second, and lots of other people are walking around, hey, you don't have a job? I need a worker, right? I mean, you walk down the streets in Taichung, every shop has a posting. We need workers. She could find a job easily, but she can't because on a spouse visa, she cannot get a job for five years. The point is they throw up these roadblocks to people whose skins are a little browner than say people from France or the United States. So here are all these young, hardworking, smart people who speak multiple languages. So you have all these skilled people here and they have kids and we need kids. Are we doing anything to bring them into Taiwan? No, of course not. Their skin's a little you know, too brown and it's, uh, it's just sad. Philippines and Taiwan should be brothers and, and Taiwanese should, Taiwan should be in the future the world is going to belong to the nation with the best immigration policy. And that nation is not going to be Taiwan. What can we do to retain foreigners? Pay and hours. That's the, that's the thing. You're competing with Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, Kuala Lumpur. You know, there are other places and they, they have their, they have, they're great. One of the things we could do is not advertise. Stop talking about food and start talking about life quality. It's really good here. You know, you've got great, you have world-class bicycling. Who knows about it? Uh, I came to Taiwan, I just wanted to stay for a couple years, make some money, see the world. And then when I opened my blog, I, I brought in that experience and so all my blog posts are filled with pictures. People love that. And um, I stayed, I had a, my wife was from here, uh, my kids were growing up here, it was safe, I had good health care, all the things that are really positive about Taiwan. People are friendly, it's easy to get around. You know, if you, if you get drunk and fall asleep in the park, no one's going to bother you, right? Whereas, <laughs> there's no guns. It's really, uh, it's really great here in many ways. Taiwanese have created something very special.